just arrived on St Mary's Island in the glorious sunshine, which is a bit of a relief because we were pretty much fogbound last night. We weren't sure we'd be able to fly out. And I'm going to walk up to the garrison walls and check out how the conservation is going on our cannons. English Heritage have got a wide range, but the ones I'm going to go and look at, which are having the more intensive conservation, are generally 18th century. But I've just got to get up this rather steep hill first. <laughs> I think you'd have to agree this is probably one of the most beautiful sites but it's definitely one of our more inaccessible ones as well and there's a lot of walking involved. Oh, I've just got to a particularly muddy patch here and it's one of the challenges of getting to the cannons because clearly when they designed these uh, beautiful little paths they weren't thinking about trying to get 4x4s and vehicles down here. So we've just arrived at Morning Point where we're undertaking a programme of conservation and they particularly need it in these sorts of areas because you can see they're right on the headland by the ocean which means they get everything the elements can throw at them, particularly strong wind and salty air which is less than ideal for what's effectively a great big hunk of metal. Hi Tim! How's it going? Very well. Fantastic! Yeah. So let's see these cannons. We're at Woolpuck Point Battery, one of the really dramatic parts of the garrison walls. And so this is a good example of the sort of damage you'll see where it's corroding and on first glance it doesn't look too bad but actually all this shininess shows where the metal is still corroding and deteriorating underneath the paint and that's why, as I say, we're actually going to strip it back so that we can get to a sound surface and repaint it. Every year we have to come and do sort of isolated repairs to protect what's underneath. After several years you have to actually think about taking all of what is left of paint off and repainting them. So we use a number of different techniques to prepare the cannons before we repaint them. And here this one's been air abraded and that involves using about two and a half tonnes of this fine grained sand. The great thing about that is you can get a really good clean surface which will be as good as possible for applying the new paint system. But the, the trick to it is to take it far enough that you remove all the bits of old corrosion and old paint so that you have a sound surface, but not to take it too far where you actually then start taking away some of the original material of the cannon. We're actually getting towards the end of the conservation of these particular cannons, but we've got another couple of weeks here to finish up everything on the islands. And it is a challenge, there's no two ways about it. But I think one of the important things is we keep these cannons here in context. And there's something tangible and something real about being able to come here, touch them and see them in their place and think about the history and everything that they've been through. That's why I feel it's really important that we keep conserving these cannons.